All right, guys, today we're going to be taking a look at these little timer boards. I actually have two of these. Uh, these were given to me by a friend just to take a look at them and see what I can get them to do. Uh, but anyhow, uh, these are dual timer circuits, I think is what they're uh, referring to them as. Uh, you can see there, dual timer V2.1. So these might be a little bit interesting. These, um, I am into uh, model railroading as well, and I have a second YouTube channel, which I'll uh, put in a card like right here. Um, but uh, so is uh, the guy that gave these to me to uh, test them. So that's what these are kind of intended to be used for. I mean, you could use them for whatever you want to, but uh, you know, the instructions are kind of uh, related to model railroading stuff. So I'm just gonna go ahead and see what I can get these things to do uh, today. So these are. They're relatively simple, they're just adjustable via uh, potentiometers. They have some terminal blocks here, and I'll take a look, I'll show you the back in a second. But uh, there's actually a uh, PIC microcontroller. I might go and get the uh, macro lens out and see if I can't get any closer to these things, but uh, let's see what I can do. All right, so with that macro lens screwed on here, we can go ahead and take a look at what we've got. So there's a PIC 16F. 505 microcontroller. This thing I assume is kind of just a uh, bank of transistors to uh, control the two relays that are on this. So they are 12 volt relays for the coil anyway, and then uh, they're 3 amps at 30 volts DC or 125 volts AC apparently. And not really wanting to focus on that, is it? There we go. So not a whole lot on these boards there. It's got a thousand microfarad capacitor on it, which is actually like a Nichon, or uh, what is it? Nichicon, yeah, there we go. Nichicon capacitor, so actually a good quality cap. Uh, interestingly enough, it's 50 volts. The uh, maximum input for these is actually 16 volts AC or DC. And it looks like they're just rectifying the uh, AC with a single diode there. And over here we have a 5 volt voltage regulator. And we have another little uh, capacitor there, which is forever branded, apparently. Uh, I don't think I've heard of that before, but 10 microfarad cap. And the adjustment potentiometers is LEDs that indicate whether the uh, outputs are on or not. A few other resistors and things around here. And not a whole lot else. So, the one thing I did want to point out is I have two of these boards. This one probably damaged during shipping or something. Then again, it doesn't really want to bend back. Kind of. There we go. A voltage regulator there. I think that's just a 7805, just 5 volt voltage regulator. And the soldering job isn't really that impressive. You can see the uh, flux residues that are left over on it. Well, that's kind of a weird effect, isn't it, with that lens? <laughs> but anyway, you can kind of see the flux residue that's left over on that. And then also this pin here has a, a dry solder joint, so I should probably fix that as well. But anyhow, let me go ahead and show you how these things uh, get wired up because there is some weird uh, connections that have to go on on this since there are so many of them. So uh, let's go ahead and get to that. All right, so when it comes to uh, this little board here, there's a few terminals that we're gonna have to connect just to get it to do anything. First off, uh, obviously the power and ground here, so zero volts is ground and plus is anywhere from 12 to 16 volts AC or DC according to the instruction manual. So uh, I've just got this uh, two and a half or whatever it is, 2.1 millimeter barrel jack that I have a 12 volt power supply that matches it. So we're gonna hook this up like so. And these of course are just uh, screw terminals, so. Now, the one interesting feature that was uh, pointed out to me by my friend is that uh, these have a random feature where you can actually set up the second timer, timer number two, to be randomized instead of just having a fixed time because these two little adjustment pots, I think they say they range from 9 to 132 seconds. Yeah, 9 from 132 seconds. So anyway, uh, if we just hook it up like this, it won't actually do anything, and I can demonstrate that. It's just gonna sit here and uh, do absolutely nothing. So what we actually need to do is we need something that starts the uh, one of the timers. 
Now, if you look on the back of this thing, there is actually a pin labeled start. And what that does is it, uh, it provides a short pulse right when you hook up the power. So you can have these timers instantly start when the uh, power is connected. And so we're just gonna put a link across from the start to the N1 pin. And all these pins, as far as I'm aware, are active low. And you can also put a switch between the uh, N1 pin and uh, ground. So anyhow, now if we hook it up, we get something here. We've got uh, a little blinking red light. And even though the light's blinking, the output will just be on solid. And you'll notice, I think it's kind of clever what they did because depending on where you have the timer set at, that light will actually blink faster or slower. So if I turn this pot, you see I can get that light to speed up or I can get the light to slow down. So uh, anyway, we're gonna go ahead and turn it all the way up so it uh, times out reasonably quickly. And there we go, it just timed out and shut off. So uh, that's it now, it won't turn itself back on. We need to essentially continue this uh, chain reaction sort of thing that we have going on here. So the next step that I'm going to take anyway is to go ahead and go from this port here, which is labeled out one. We're gonna screw in a wire there. So this is the output from timer one, the output of the chip. It is not a power output, it is simply a logic level output that we can use to tie more timers to each other. But So we're gonna take out one and we're gonna tie it to in two. And now, if we plug this in, we're gonna start. You'll see that timer one activates there with a the blinking light and you can hear the relay click in as well. After nine seconds, this one shuts off and the next one turns on. And you'll notice that, uh, we'll go ahead and turn the uh, timing down on this one as well just to speed it up. You'll see that the light flashing. And in a few more seconds, it should time out and now the thing's off again. So one thing that you could do with this is instead of having this link here between the start pin and the end pin, you could put a push button between the end pin and ground. And then every time you push that button, it will automatically start a sequence of events. Well, what I'm gonna set up now is kind of like an automatic timer that will continue to time different events as it goes. So, now we have a pin for out to. Now we're gonna go ahead and shove a wire into that. And we're gonna go from out to back to the pin in one. And we're gonna hook up power now. You see the timer number one is active now. And timer number two is active. And now we're back to timer one. And this will continue to flip back and forth like this indefinitely or until the power is removed anyway. So now we're gonna go ahead and interface in another one of these boards so we get essentially four of these kind of going around in a circle. So first off, I'll prepare the connections that need to be done on this board. So we're gonna go from the out one connection over to the in two connection on this board. Okay, then from our out two terminal, out two is gonna go back to in one and then the out two on this board will go back to in one on this board. So the wire that we had going from out two on this board is gonna to go to in one on this board, which is this wire or this connection. All right, then the out two wire from this board will go back to the in one wire of the first board. And then we'll tie together the uh, power. And whoops, this one uh, actually came out of here. It's kind of annoying that you have to uh, connect multiple wires into one terminal block because they do tend to like to slip out of there unless you get them just right. So that's the trick is to get them just right, I guess. All right, so now that I've got that sorted out with that wire kind of falling out of there, I'm gonna go ahead and try hooking up the power wires again. All right, so I've got all four of these uh, connected together now. We're gonna go ahead and 
plug it in. Did something click? What just happened? Yeah, that's doing absolutely nothing because the wire fell out. All right, so I've got it all wired together. Hopefully this will actually work if we plug it in. All right, so uh, the first timer is on there, if you can see that. It's sort of, it's almost not even a flashing light at this point with it turned all the way down. It's more like a flickering light, but uh, it's working. I can see number two's on there. And number three is on. If you can see it even. Pretty bright in this room. Number four. And back to having timer number one enabled. All right, so now we're gonna try a little bit of an experiment with the uh, random terminal. First off, I'm gonna go ahead and put this link back into here uh, where it was before between N1 and start. And this one is coming from the ground connection. Since everything on this seems to be active low, we're gonna use ground on this. And we're gonna hook it up to this random terminal on timer number two. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and loop the uh, out two pin back into N1 over here. Just so we're back to this sort of basic setup where it'll continue to run at least. Though I'm not sure that the random thing will actually re-trigger or not, but we're gonna go ahead and have to try this. If we plug it in, it should start if the, uh, you know, the wire didn't fall out. All right, so let's try this again now that I've got the uh, power set up. And you'll notice that both of the LEDs are actually flashing. Now, one thing that I noticed from my uh, testing of this earlier is if you adjust this pot, that LED will still flash at a different rate. But it doesn't actually mean anything. Um, it's still, it, it is actually random. Like actually now it's just stuck on, which is kind of interesting. And then it just shut off there. And it appears as though it's just going to keep doing random timings for as long as I have this pin held to ground. But this one does seem to be uh, resetting this other one every time it shuts off. So we're going to try one more thing. Instead of connecting this to ground, which it actually instantly shut off when I did that. It's kind of interesting. I don't know if that's that. I'm not sure this will actually work. Let's see, it's actually the other one. I'm not entirely sure what the random timing range, I could imagine it's the same. We're gonna move this over into the random pin and just see if it'll trigger the random. And the other thing I'll do is I'll turn the timing all the way back down so we'll know if it's actually truly random or not. So I'll give that a second for the cap to drain and then hook this back up. And as soon as that nine seconds run out, it should. Okay, yeah, so that is kind of interesting. Uh, you cannot just trigger the random event like you could with uh, the normal thing. So this wire is actually kind of useless. Uh, so the random has to be run continuously. You can't uh, just con or you can't just like trigger a random timing event and you'll see as soon as I hook up ground to that it does work but you have to continue to keep ground on it otherwise if you disconnect it it instantly shuts off so and I kind of I actually don't hear the relay clicking in either which is kind of odd yeah, and also for the uh, in terms of the outputs these are uh, pretty simple they're just the the relay contacts are completely uh, dry contact so the common terminal then A and B or the uh, the other two contacts, which are what single pull double throw, I think. So those are, they just wire in like switches basically. So anyhow, the random timing thing, it works, but it doesn't work necessarily in the way that I would want it to. Uh, but anyhow, that's that. Now this of course could be pretty easily done with an Arduino. So let me show you. These things are about $12 by the way. I forget if I mentioned that or not. If we get something like this into the picture, uh, we have eight relays, eight relays on the card and then an Arduino Nano. Now the Arduino Nanos can be bought in quantities of one for about five dollars. 
the relay card was about nine dollars or is currently about nine dollars anyway and i actually have a bit of a demonstration code uh, for these put onto this arduino that i made up uh, so these are kind of the same way you see the light comes on that means that the relay's on and these relays are actually set up for uh they're 10 amp relays and then they're five volt coil so these are powered straight off the of five volts of the arduino or you can power it off a separate five volt supply i seem to be getting a lot of voltage drop through the usb cables for whatever reason so this does take a fair amount of current and may not be powered too easily off of the arduino nano's built-in regulator if you're going to run this off like 12 volts or something um but anyhow and these are actually safe enough i have a really bad connection somewhere on that pin number seven or relay number seven for whatever reason but these actually have the isolation slots and whatnot cut in them that uh, make them at least reasonably safe to be used on like 120 volt stuff but uh, anyhow the other nice thing with this is that the timing range is basically infinite you see this is about half a second that other thing was about 10 seconds you can go pretty hot <laughs> that's about 100 milliseconds there uh, anyhow, you can go pretty high with the timing ranges on these as well. So that is one nice thing with the Arduino. You're not limited to that nine second to 132 second uh, timing. Also, this is gonna be more precise because you're not just kind of uh, turning a potentiometer and hoping that it's right. You're actually uh, typing in numbers in order to get it right, which is in milliseconds. Though I don't think you could turn on and off a relay in milliseconds, really. And also you can turn on and off as many of these relays as you want to at a time. And, well, probably, anyway, if you got really into these things and wiring them together, you could probably get them to do a similar thing with having as many relays on as you wanted to. Though it would be a lot harder to do it with wiring like that than it is in code. So uh, one thing, like price-wise, this whole setup is about $14 and you have eight relays on it. This thing is about $12 and you have two relays on it. Uh, and of course, I have two of them with me. So $24 gets you and it's going to scale the same way. So $48 would get you the eight relays that this thing has versus the uh, about $14 or so that this actually cost. I guess I'm not including the price of the wiring, but still. Uh, the power supply might be a little bit harder on this, though, because you're going to have to uh, regulate 5 volts getting into it. The voltage regulator on this might be powerful enough to be able to do this, but the other option is to just get a 5-volt uh, power supply and use that. So, uh, anyhow, and then these are going to be set up the same way with the contacts. You have the exact same setup, really, with the, the relays basically just replacing switches. That's a simple little demonstration on these little dual timer boards. These things, I think, are actually made in the UK, by the way. All right, so actually, I was, actually, I was wrong pricing-wise with these things. They're actually uh, 1650 and that's in pounds, so it's actually going to be more than that in uh, U.S. currency. But anyway, I'm about out of time on my memory card here, so... Uh, these things are pretty expensive. They do work. Uh, they're simple enough to set up. They're just wiring and then adjusting some potentiometers in order to get the timing right. Uh, this, I like this solution better because it's cheaper mostly. And to me, I'd rather do coding and setting up times than doing it with uh, the uh, sort of hardware and kind of hoping that you get the time set where you want them with the potentiometers. And this is limited to your nine seconds up to 132 seconds where this is limited to, well, it's not really limited at all. You can go up pretty high with the uh, Arduinos. But uh, anyway, that's a little look at these timer circuits and also an alternative to them. So uh, that's it for now, guys. Bye.